types of play and its values. In the previous video, we have studied about what is play and understood the meaning, concepts and benefits of play. In this video, let us study about the different types of play along with its values. As we all know, play is an important work in early childhood. It's important to learn about how the power of play can help children imbibe important skills and prepare them to face the competent world. While play is often seen as something frivolous that children do to pass their time, play is an incredibly important part of child's healthy development. Play is actually child's work. Through play, children learn academic skills like effective communication, conflict resolution, problem solving and cooperation. Maybe most importantly, they learn about themselves. They get to know their personalities, including their likes and dislikes, strengths and interests. Through play, children learn where they fit in the world. Realizing the importance of play, it becomes essential to know the various types of play, its characteristics and importance. Hence, this module on types of play and its value would attempt to elaborate Parton's theory of play. At the end of this module, you will be able to learn about the types of play as per Parton's theory, understand the characteristics and importance of the first two types of play according to Parton, identify activities fostering each kind of play, namely unoccupied play and solitary types of play. Play is of different forms, especially in the case of younger children. No child is seen sitting still. They can always be seen engaged in some sort of play or the other. One of the early researchers named Mildred Parton in 1932 studied children at play and stated that play is not hierarchical but depends on the situation or circumstances a child may engage in any kind of play. She has identified six stages of play that children progress through. It's important to note that each child develops at his or her own pace, so children of the same age may not show exactly the same types of play. Parton has classified the participation of children during free play by observing children of age 2 to 5. There are six stages in Parton's theory. Unoccupied play, solitary play, onlooker play, parallel play, associative play, and cooperative play. As I mentioned earlier, in this video, we'll study about the first two types of play, namely unoccupied play and solitary type of play. The rest of the types will be dealt with in the next video. The child is busy engaged in unoccupied play from birth to 3 years of age. It's also called as free spontaneous play. According to Parton, it's an act that keeps the child engaged during infancy. It's an unorganized sort of play which helps the child to explore the surrounding. Children are relatively still and their play appears scattered. Unoccupied play helps the child to manipulate materials master self-control and learn about the things around him or her. There are no rules and regulations. Unoccupied play looks like babies or young children exploring materials around them without any sort of organization. It's mostly demonstrated by infants who try to explore themselves around their new surroundings. The child explores the world through complete free thinking, movements and imagination. The baby plays alone and as long as he wants. He gets enjoyment by exercising his sense organs and this play is exploratory in nature. For example, if an object which is colorful and smooth is kept near the child, he or she grabs, kicks and crawls around with it until an adult distracts the child through a surprising sound or physical contact. Idle observations and aimless movement of the body are examples of unoccupied behavior. Activities for unoccupied play 
Here there is no need of any special equipment or play material. What matters is the environment of the child. Child just uses their sense organs to play. Other than the sense organs, the child only needs the presence of the adult as a supporting agent for the play. This is one of the first type of play seen in younger children who are around 2 to 3 years. In this, children are unaware of what others are doing and they are not interested in others' tasks. It's an independent play by the child himself. They play alone and continuously focusing only on their activity thereby entertaining themselves without any social involvement. They may not notice or acknowledge other children. This is the time period when the child explores the world around them and discovers new situations they are introduced to. Adults sometimes might worry about children playing alone. But actually this kind of play is very normal. Solitary play helps the child to use their imagination and develop physical and mental skills thereby mastering new personal skills. During this stage, a child will be able to explore, create and learn as to how things are working. They start using their imagination and apply rules while playing. It is said to be the preparatory period for children before playing with others. Children in this play are not expected to achieve any goal. Children often talk to themselves at the time of solitary play. There are two types of solitary play, namely active play and solitary imaginative play. Solitary active play includes make-believe play. It is considered to be the bridge between solitary play and social play. This play includes repeated simple movements with or without a toy. For example, a child playing on a beach, filling sand into the bucket and undoing it repeatedly for a long period of time. Activities of solitary active play Certain toys that can keep the child engaged such as blocks, electronic cars, bouncing balls, manual toy cars or bicycles etc. which allow the child to release their energy and keep them busy for certain time. Solitary imaginative play is playing using a little bit of imagination which strengthens the child's mental ability. It even helps develop their abstract thinking, language and creativity. Children imagine situations and make up stories with their toys. For example, Wright has a blanket and molded toys to play. Using her imagination, she assumes the blanket to be her mansion and the toys to be her friends and serpents in which Wright takes the lead role of a princess. She goes around giving commands or orders regarding the tasks which she imagines to be done by one of the dolls. Activities for solitary imaginative play For this, an adult need not provide many toys or any other items. The child will usually make use of other materials that are usually available at home or in the environment and use them as their toys based on their imagination. The child, in addition, also uses all the toys which she or he has already been using and creates another new world of their own. Hope you have understood well about unoccupied play and solitary play through this video. See you in my next video with the rest of the types of play. Thank you.